I spent enough time now in entertainment with, with, with Pixar and working with Disney, who's just a terrific company to work with, by the way, um, is that people go to their television primarily to turn their brain off. You know, I used to think, like many of you maybe might used to think, uh, might have thought, that, um, that, that there was this giant conspiracy of the networks to put mediocrity on television and dumb us down, right? Did you ever think that? I thought that. I thought it was a giant conspiracy to rob the American uh, populace of their, their mind, if not their soul. But I, I then found out the truth, which is far more depressing. <laughs> which is, the networks give people precisely what they want. And the reason people want this stuff is they come home from a long day. You know, they, 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 they have dinner with their kids and they're fighting and they get them to bed and they just want to turn on the television and turn their brain off for half an hour. Right? So, do you ever do that? I mean, I must admit, I don't watch much TV, but I do that every once in a while. After a long, hard day, I will turn on the TV for half an hour and it really does turn your brain off. And, so people go to their TV to turn their brain off for the most part. People go to their PC to turn their brain on. When we look into the history of art, what we find is that in all versions of art from all cultures everywhere around the world, some themes crop up the same as they've always cropped up. Now, some people who are more religious than others tend to want those themes of religion to be the only themes represented. But this is not how reality works. Because, of course, if that happens, that is to deny what reality is. Wearing rose-colored glasses to look at the world. And the world cannot be seen in that way. Not if we want to tackle actual problems. Now, I remember playing this video. And I would just like to remind everybody, in case you forgot, what 18-year-old Black Americans were creating long before an Ice Spice came around. There was the music that I grew up on. There was Lauryn Hill. Lauryn Hill in The Sister Act was about 18 years old when she sang like this. That is the Black culture that I recognize. That is the sound of Black music that I recognize. And everything around us, again, not just Black culture, but in American culture, has been in a full steep decline. We're all recognizing it. And now it's time for us to try to accurately identify who is sitting behind this, who wants to see America fall, because it is so obvious that that is the implicit goal here. The only goal of the artist is to make good art. And the only goal of the people who sell art is to make money. Together, you get this back and forth where both of them will resort to controversial topics. And if we go and read some black artists from the past, you will find themes of love that are not some beautiful monogamous thing that you wish was always represented in the past. Remember, controversy about music started a long time ago, way before we even had recording materials. I'm talking about back, back, back thousands of years ago. But let me give one example that people might have heard of in America. So let's read Muddy Waters' Manish Boy. I'm a man. I'm a full-grown man. I'm a natural-born lover's man. I'm a rolling stone. Man, I'm a natural-born lover's man. I'm a man, I'm a hoochie coochie man, the line I shoot and will never miss, when I make love to a girl she can't resist, I think I go down to old Kansas too, I'm a gonna bring back to second cousin, that's little Johnny Kocheru, all you little girls sitting out at the line, I can make love to you honey in five minutes time are actually very consistent back in the day for what people would buy as music. And it's funny because she played, you know, that other singer singing a godly song as if that's what all of black America was, which this is the entertainment industry. It's different than just black culture. There's a difference between black culture and black culture 
ingratiated in entertainment where there's incentive to perform in a different way than you would in real life and of course there is a difference between good culture or whatever you want to call it like religious and non-religious secular music secular music tends to have these themes what other themes would they have and then of course it's not just in black culture it's literally everywhere but since she said this didn't exist back in the day it's first important that we show that it did exist and a lot of these people say that black culture back in the day was this perfect thing where the people never engaged in stuff like this but have you ever seen the girls dancing at the cotton club they literally twerk in there another more subtle example that is different than the ones that i will show later where they just start throwing f words everywhere is this one it's called the twist by chubby checker now if you're not five you already know that this was just a, a euphemism for intercourse you see there a ba twist baby twist oh yeah just like this come on little miss and do the twist my daddy is sleeping and my mama ain't around yeah daddy's just sleeping and mama ain't around we're gonna twist twist a twist in till they tear the house down come on baby let's do the twist blah 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 now if you think this is about actually twisting then you're an idiot but again these themes exist and people who <laughs> are very sensitive make these songs far more creative for the listener because the artist doesn't stop talking about these themes instead they talk about them in ways that are a little more subtle and probably more creative showing that these themes are not something that are being forced upon the artist it's something that artists actually like to produce but at the same time it's not a conspiracy it's not some guy is trying to control your mind and dumb you down and make you stupid and blah 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 if you if you do that then you must understand that it would not work almost every place i don't care if it's print i don't care if it's images i don't care if it's whatever flyers i don't even care if it's medicine or whatever if it was let to just be unregulated or whatever it's always going to go down to the base of nature that because those are the incentives those are the things that guide us as human beings that's what we find entertaining now i know what you're thinking you're just picking and choosing the ones that have these themes no, i'm not no i definitely am not because if you go find top 10 uh blues songs born under a bad sign is number two by albert king and literally the song first starts with a uh, uh, born under a bad sign, been down since I began to crawl, blah, blah, blah. And so that is talking about how he's bad on luck. And then it moves on to the theme. You know, wine and woman is all I crave. A big legged woman is going to carry me to the grave. Born under a bad sign, I've been down since I began to crawl. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd tell... I wouldn't have no luck at all. I know everybody that I've already stated is a male, and most of them have done some pretty controversial songs, which is hilarious considering the fact that people are saying that only now in the 21st century are we starting to engage in that. But what about people like Billie Holiday, who have songs like My Man, which are pretty controversial songs considering the themes? It goes something like this. It costs me a lot, but there's one thing that I've got. It's my man. Cold and wet, tired, you bet. All of this I'll soon forget with my man. He's not much on looks. He's no hero out of books, but I love him. Yes, I love him. Two or three girls has he that he likes as well as me, but I love him. I don't know why I should. He isn't true. He beats me too. What can I do? Oh, my man.
And so he'll never know all my life is just a spare. But I don't care when he takes me in his arms. The world is bright. All right. What's the difference if I say I'll go away when I know I'll come back on my knees someday for whatever my man is, I'm his forevermore. That's a very uplifting song. She's got several songs, by the way, that are on this line. But obviously, she's got some pretty uplifting music. Actually, her music's actually pretty awesome, if you ever listen to it. And more than this is, I'm just so far mentioning the black artists. You don't even want to know what the white artists sound like, but I will show them. But first, let's go to one of the most controversial black artists from the past. Lucille Anderson, who was part of a group of a movement or whatever you want to call it, called Dirty Blues. And in 2022, she was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. Her themes were around explicit content of the intercourse nature. Her song, Till the Cows Come Home, is one of the most interesting ones from back then, especially since a lot of people pretend that everyone back then was some kind of angel. And, of course, the people who are listening to this, so that multiplies these angels by a good number. So the lyrics go, do it, do, do, do it, do it till the cows come home. Do, do, do it, do it to me, baby. Do, do, do it, do it till the cows come home. Do, do, do it, do it to me, baby. Grinding, do it, grinding, do it. Grinding, baby, all night. Grinding, baby, do it to me. Grinding, baby, do it till the great... Grinding baby, do it. They got a great big D word. Grinding, do it. Grinding, do it. Grinding baby all night. Grinding baby, do it to me. Grinding baby, do it. Grinding baby, do it. They got a great big, let's just say dick. I got a big fat belly. I got a big broad ass. And I can F any man with real good class, talking about effing, talking about grinding, baby all night long, and I can do it to you, honey, until the cows come home, till the cows come home, till the cows come home. You know, both of my mans, they are tight like that. They got a great big D word. Just like a baseball bat. Oh, F me. Do it to me all night long. I want you to do it to me, baby. Honey, till the cows come home. And it goes along these lines. So what have we learned from that? Well, first of all, we've learned that there's nothing wrong with this because it's clearly not the reason why any society has bad elements in its society. This is just music. And you can see there that there's a there's that um misunderstanding or whatever you want to call it where you don't know are they being serious or is this just a song just like rap music today just like any other type of music that people like to pretend is like some deep evil that is responsible for the way people behave which is not true people behave the way they do because of their circumstances this type of music is adult escapism but why would adults need to escape Maybe instead of worrying about art, you should think about what is it that you're doing as a human being in real life that would cause real people to find solace or some kind of rest away from you in this type of world. Americans, on top of this, did not invent what I'm talking about. For example, if we look at the Maasai, at least one documentary of the Maasai, but I've heard other songs of Maasai along the same line. If you look at the tribal songs, not the ones that are, you know, commercial, which are going to be well made for a certain type of religious audience to give them a certain whatever. But if we look at the Maasai music sang by the Maasai straight, this is the Maasai, this is a tribe in Africa 
first this woman prefaces the song by explaining that a husband is jealous if you take a warrior as a lover your husband will beat you now keep that in mind and then she says but you continue to just steal away over here over here over here stealing means having a love affair with this warrior the song about sleeping with the man that he her husband doesn't want him to goes my lover has soft lines round his neck and beautiful mouth his hair is beautiful i was sitting in my house one evening when some warriors came in from the forest one of the warriors turned to me and asked how did you come to love that warrior i just spat he doesn't churn he just lies straight not turning to the wall and talks lovingly then there are several of songs in nguni culture where they sing about cattle now if you don't know cattle is a euphemism for human genitalia and one of them to give you an example is a song called which goes like woman don't touch father's cattle while he is sleeping now you can guess what that means okay but that's just africa right africa is the one that has all of those things europe doesn't have any of that right well what if we go to one of the european classics so in other words let's go to mozart right everybody knows mozart everybody loves mozart and all his music is all nice and stuff well actually he's got a song called lick mich im arsch which in english means lick me in the a double s quickly literally listen to these lyrics lick me in the ass quickly lick me in the ass quickly lick me lick me quickly let us be glad grumbling is in vain growling droning is in vain is the true bane of life droning is in vain growling droning is in vain in vain thus let us be cheerful and merry be glad kiss my arse gotier gotier goat von gerler ching you know the sick the scene too well let us now shout the summary that's when the chorus comes in which is lick my arsh it's hard to put themes by white musicians given the fact that a whole lot of them just stole songs from the black community and then remade them because the audience back then was also racist so sometimes they didn't even want to hear the songs being sang by the original singers here is my little two cent that nobody asked for i am sick of seeing black americans in the media on social media in the news doing crime walking around next to naked the women the men perpetuating gang violence substance abuse the absolute worst of our community is oversaturating the media even though they make up a small percentage of all of black americans yes so basically the music is highlighting a small part of what is happening in real life it's almost as if it's a fiction meant to make you realize a reality that is happening no matter how small remember the words sex drugs and rock and roll was that hip hop why do you think this word existed way before hip hop ever existed it's because that's what gets highlighted by the media now you're saying but you say, i'm telling you that it's not necessarily black culture it's media culture and the media does this and the audience flock to it and believe it or not it's worldwide but worldwide people don't do bad things because of media they might do some things because of media for example 
I've seen people take up martial arts because they watched a martial arts movie. I've seen kids literally start, you know, going bang, 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 bang with their fingers when they watch some action movie. But there's a difference between that and actually going out and committing crimes, which happens because of what area you're in and how you're raised. You know how I know? Because I've watched a bunch of movies and music from America that is controversial as hell and I've never done none of these things. In fact, I've never even thought about doing any of these things. The decay of our morality within black communities has been slowly declining over the past 20 years and no one is talking about it, no one is saying anything about it or trying to address it. And if you do, you are often told that you're policing black bodies. If you say black women, stop getting on the internet and in, and in the media, twerking, walking around with little clothes on. You're, 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 can, people tell you that you're uh, policing, policing bodies, policing black bodies, or it's respectability politics. You know what I find strange about this policing bodies thing is how, how can you focus on black people twerking or whatever when your country is literally, it literally allows pornography, hardcore pornography, which I'm almost certain some of the things that people have seen in hardcore pornography, they would never have thought of themselves to ever have seen that. Why not call that out first before you go anywhere near, oh, women are wearing skimpy clothes? Now, don't get me wrong. I respect black people who want to check other black people for doing wrong. But what wrong has been committed? You're talking about the media, something that doesn't even represent reality, as you mentioned in your thing in the beginning. If you are black and you speak your piece on what we're seeing in the media, if you don't like seeing the 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 low morality that is often portrayed about the black community in the media. I hope, she says, you pick up the remote and change the channel and don't feed the beast. Because, of course, if you feed the beast, then they have more incentive to continue that type of content. From the, the trap music to the black women twerking and music videos and all over social media, the Sukihan, Sukihanas and the sexy reds of the world. If you are black and you take issue with it and you talk about it, you are usually called bourgeois, sadiddy, uppity, it's respectability politics, you're policing black bodies and the like. And it's like, no, I'm black too. And as such, this being my ethnic culture as well, I have a right to have something to say about what I'm seeing going on. Your average black American is a middle class, working class, blue collar Jane and Joe. Correct. Now say it with me. Despite the fact that there's all this degeneracy in media, your average black person is a middle class hard-working, well-respectable, just-wants-to-live-their-life person. In spite of it, doesn't matter that it's there, it didn't affect the majority of black people. It's almost like there's a certain type of black people that gravitated to it because they were living that type of lifestyle anyway. The ghetto subculture, black ghetto subculture that we see often portrayed in over inundated and oversaturating the media, those black Americans make up a tiny, tiny percentage of black Americans as a whole. Yet mean, but somehow they're in the media, um, overcompensating in the media, oversaturating the media. Yes, but when we say we want lawyers and blah, 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 black people in random movies, we're called woke and we're told that, hey, let actors act let people just do what they want to do. When we want to portray ancient Egyptians, there's a whole right-wing frenzy about it. Literally portraying queens from ancient history, there's a huge frenzy about it. So there's nothing we can do correct. If we try and portray positivity, immediately there'll be a bunch of people coming in and saying, why are you doing this? When we replace older positive characters that used to be white and try to turn them black that's evil when we do random things and say that the oscars are against black people or anything like that that's woke and evil so there is no winning is there either we're woke or we just like perpetuating degeneracy 
I know I don't just speak for myself when I say that I'm sick of seeing it, that it's gross, that it is destroying what black culture actually is. It's co-opting black culture as a whole and making it seem as though all of black culture is ghetto subculture. I'm not the only black American who takes issue with it. Because like I said, majority of black America is middle class, not in the ghettos, not out here perpetuating gang violence, promiscuity, and everything else. And I don't care if you claim it's respectability politics. I guess so. So be it. Because this is gross. It's getting really gross out here how blatantly disrespectful and low class we're acting on social media. Black people are not the worst people on social media. If you want to know who the worst people on social media are, go to an uplifting video for black people and go read the comments by people of a, a particular race. And you will see how low class some people can be. And in the media, on the internet, on TV, and you can claim that this is someone else's set of moral standards, but no, it isn't. It isn't. Look at black America in the 50s, in the 60s. Our I looked at black America in the 60s and the 50s and the 30s and the 1800s. And if you read the lyrics from the media, you will see that it's the same goddamn thing because that's the media. The media is not black culture necessarily. It's a reflection of some form of black culture that is being highlighted by the media because of people wanting to see controversy and party music as it's been since the beginning of history. I know some people are going to be like, what about the Beatles? The Beatles were the Beatles were not uplifting. They promoted drugs, sex, rock and roll and other stuff like that. I know that it sounded good and they had some good songs too like everybody else, but they also had their pretty nonsensical songs which got millions, millions of buys. I was going to say downloads, but they lived back in the day when you could actually make real money by degenerating society, supposedly. Uh, but for some reason, the white community did not suffer this great fall that these guys are talking about, even though there's a whole bunch of poor people in America who are white, but somehow, you know, they're, they're surviving. Moral standards back then, drastically different from what we have today, or what we're, we're, we're convincing ourselves is a moral standard today. Every racial group on the face of the planet has their own ghetto subculture within their respective racial and ethnic groups. This is the case for everybody everywhere, white people, Asian people, Mexican people, you name it. The difference is, is that those racial groups and those ethnic groups do not allow their ghetto subculture to co-op the entire culture as a whole and to represent the entire culture as a whole. They don't allow it. And they don't? What about all the mafia movies that came out or any of these other gangster movies like Scarface or any of the stupid stuff that was going on? You're telling me they really don't do that when they actually do? Go look up how many movies they have about literally cocaine and all the stupid stuff that people do. Go what what about teen movies? Remember those? Those were all over the place. If you're saying the majority population discriminates and stereotypes the black entertainers into a funnel, which by the way they do with Asians and everybody else, and then they don't give roles that are more diverse, then I agree with you. If you're saying that black people are so dumb that they just mimic the media and degenerate their culture while everybody else can handle having their culture literally be degenerate. And I'll say it again. You live in a country where they allow hardcore pornography. And speaking of the past, does anybody remember FHM, Victoria's Secret, Playboy, any of these things that were reliant on half naked women and then for the most the funny part is a lot of these companies didn't even allow or had a sort of under policy under carpet policy where they wouldn't allow black people to be on there so they were like no we only sexually exploit 
uh, white females. Everybody else within that respective ethnic group or cultural group or racial group has a right to say how they want to see themselves represented in the media, what they want to see and what they don't want to see, who gets to speak for them and who does not. Except for when you're a black American and you have something to say about the way that you see black Americans being portrayed in the media and you have a critique for your peers. You can't do it because it's respectability politics if you attempt to do it. Or you can do it, but black people are going to call you out because you're focusing on one group of people when every single other person does it. Now, I could bring up white people who say the same thing that get criticized by just about anybody for talking bad about black, quote unquote, culture. It's media culture, really. But whatever like you have you have your opinion if you want to have your opinion but don't pretend that everybody has to agree with you or you're judging your peers by a set of moral standards that somebody else created which is a farce from the reconstruction era down through the 60s black americans had their own set of moral standards and social protocols that we adhered to ask your grannies ask your great grannies they'll tell you i have had just about enough of seeing black culture being drugged through the muck by other black Americans who are perverting it and turning black culture, something that is beautiful into something perverse, showing their ass on the internet all the time. The men are constantly rapping and talking about gang violence. Our children are uneducated and stupid. Okay, okay. You can't say that most black people are in the middle class and elegant and then say most of their children are stupid. We've created a cultural standard of promiscuity and single motherhood. And Black people are not the only people who are promiscuous or have a promiscuous culture in America. In fact, promiscuity is something that's been around forever. Interesting earlier, she said, go ask your granny. Well, first of all, you can't ask your granny about promiscuity. She won't give you the truth. She'll tell you that she was like reserved or whatever, which is not true because we know we've know we know what people were doing back in the day especially if you go far enough in american history and then you start seeing all kinds of crazy things regarding you know child labor and stuff like that people weren't doing what you think they were doing there's a lot of hiding of illegitimate children or getting married even though the kid wasn't yours to preserve the honor of the person there were bad things happening and in fact they're still happening today in other parts of the world that's how we know we could clock it we could just go look in places like the middle east where there's quote unquote high morality in what you like and for some reason those cultures are still very violent not that not the whole middle east but they have a section of their culture that's very 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 violent even though they're not big champions of rap music when a black american goes to critique and judge our peers our fellow black americans and critique the condition of our uh, neighborhoods today they're shut down that's respectability politics you're policing black Americans. If that's what it is, so be it. So be it, it needs to be said. And in order for us to attempt to escape accountability or responsibility on our own part, we claim that the conditions that we see in black communities is being caused by somebody else. It's not our own fault, it's white people and it's structural racism or something or another. It's everybody else's fault except for our own. Give me a break. It's pitiful. It's pitiful that we refuse to take accountability for the things that we see going on in our communities. And sure, we can acknowledge that structural racism and the history of slavery in this country and discrimination and Jim Crow and black codes and all of that has played a part in the conditions and some of the conditions that we see in black communities. But we also have to be responsible for the ways in which black Americans create their own conditions and contribute to the degenerative effects that we see going on in our communities. Black Americans who don't want to hear that immediately run to innocence. They rush to innocence. They claim that it's respectability politics to call out these issues in our community. They claim that it's policing black bodies to call out the low morality and the moral decay in our community. Call it whatever you want. You're not going to get me to shut up about it. I'm black. This is my culture, too. I have a right to talk about and critique what is happening in my culture and have something to say about it. That's all.